Since 1969, we've celebrated the Apollo 11 mission as a pinnacle of human achievement, believing we sent astronauts 384,400 kilometers away to the moon. To state it boldly, this monumental event in space exploration never really happened. Despite the advancements in technology and years of space travel history, humans have never actually set foot beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Today, we're not just questioning the moon landing. We're challenging the very foundation of space exploration history. Get ready to explore a perspective that turns one of humanity's biggest accomplishments into its greatest story ever told. The Atmosphere's Unseen Boundaries This atmospheric blanket stretching above us is not just a single entity but a series of distinct layers, each with its unique characteristics and challenges for space exploration. The journey begins in the troposphere, the lowest layer, extending roughly 10 kilometers miles, above sea level. This layer, where we live and breathe, contains 99% of the water vapor in the atmosphere, playing host to all our weather phenomena. As we ascend, the air pressure drops and temperatures plunge, making conditions increasingly hostile for human survival. Above the troposphere lies the stratosphere, reaching about 50 kilometer 31 miles, above the ground. Here, we find the protective ozone layer, absorbing harmful ultraviolet UV light from the sun. Interestingly, the temperature in the stratosphere increases with altitude, a contrast to the layer below. This layer's relative calmness makes it ideal for commercial jet travel. Climbing higher, we encounter the mesosphere, extending up to 85 kilometer, 53 miles above Earth. This layer is where most meteors burn up upon entry. The air here is far too thin to breathe, and the temperatures hit extreme lows around negative 90 degrees Celsius, negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit, marking it as the coldest part of our atmosphere. The thermosphere, starting above the mesosphere, brings a dramatic shift. Here, high-energy X-rays and UV radiation from the sun heat the air to temperatures ranging from 500 degrees Celsius 932 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,000 degrees Celsius, 3,632 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the air is so thin that it would feel freezing to us. This layer is where the International Space Station orbits, and it includes the Kármán line, often considered the boundary between our atmosphere and outer space, at about 100 kilometer altitude. Finally, the exosphere, the outermost layer, represents the transition to space. Extremely thin, it's here that molecules gradually escape into the vacuum of space. There's no definitive upper boundary to the exosphere. It just fades away, somewhere between 100,000 km, 62,000 miles, and 190,000 km, 120,000 miles, above Earth. Each of these layers presents unique challenges for space travel. Recent discoveries have revealed that Earth's gaseous layer, the geocorona, a part of the exosphere, extends much farther than previously thought, up to 630,000 kilometers away, or almost twice the distance to the moon. This means that technically, the moon flies through Earth's atmosphere. This was discovered through observations by the ESA NASA Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, SOHO, which showed that the outermost part of our planet's atmosphere reaches well beyond the lunar orbit. The geocorona, primarily composed of hydrogen atoms, surrounds Earth and extends far into space. While it's a very sparse layer with just 70 hydrogen atoms per cubic centimeter at 60,000 kilometers above Earth, it gets even thinner towards the Moon's distance, with about 0.2 atoms per cubic centimeter. Despite its presence, this layer is still considered a vacuum by Earth's standards and does not significantly facilitate space exploration. This revelation about Earth's extended atmosphere has implications for space travel and moon missions. While the geocorona does not pose a significant threat to space travelers or moon missions, its presence is a factor to consider, especially for space telescopes operating in ultraviolet wavelengths, as they would need to account for the geocorona's influence when studying the chemical composition of stars and galaxies. The Van Allen Radiation Belt and the Moon Landing the Van Allen Radiation Belt presents a fascinating and complex challenge in the context of space travel, especially concerning the Apollo moon landings.
Discovered in 1958, these belts are zones of energetic charged particles, primarily electrons and protons, trapped by Earth's magnetosphere. These particles mainly originate from the solar wind and can be hazardous to spacecraft and astronauts due to their high radiation levels. Earth has two main Van Allen belts extending from about 640 km to 58,000 km above the surface. The inner belt is dominated by protons and the outer one by electrons. These belts are in the inner region of Earth's magnetic field, trapping particles and protecting the atmosphere from destruction. However, they also pose a danger to satellites, which require adequate shielding. A major concern regarding the Apollo missions was the potential harm from passing through these radiation belts. Radiation sickness occurs with exposure to about 200 to 1,000 rads of radiation within a few hours. Some people argue that the levels of radiation within the Van Allen belt should have been lethal to the astronauts. However, NASA emphasizes that the astronauts received only small doses of radiation due to the short amount of time spent traversing the belt. Shadows in Moon Landing Photos The shadows in the photographs from the Apollo 11 moon landing have raised significant doubts and led to theories challenging the authenticity of the moon landing. In the moon landing photos, shadows cast by different objects, such as the lunar module and rocks, are not parallel. This has been interpreted as evidence of artificial lighting used in a film studio, suggesting that the landing was staged on Earth. The sun angle was approximately 15.4 degrees. Based on this angle, the expected length of a shadow cast by an object 1 meter tall would be about 3.63 meters. However, the images from the Apollo 11 mission show that objects cast shadows of approximately 2 meters for every 1 meter in height. This discrepancy in shadow lengths has fueled theories that the moon landing photos were not taken in the natural lunar environment, where only one light source, the sun, would be present. The difference in expected and observed shadow lengths is seen by some as evidence that the moon landing was staged on Earth with artificial lighting. The moon's surface, being devoid of atmosphere, should exhibit simple lighting effects with direct sunlight creating sharp, clear shadows. However, the photos show complex lighting that some argue resembles studio lighting, with soft edges and multiple shadow directions. Also, on the moon, there should be no secondary light sources to create the observed shadow effects. The presence of these unusual shadows in the photos has led some to propose that additional artificial lighting was used, which would not be present on the moon's surface. These observations about the shadows in the moon landing photographs form the basis of one of the key arguments made by those who believe the moon landing was a staged event. The discrepancies in shadow behavior are seen as inconsistent with what one would expect in a lunar environment with a single, consistent light source. Absence of stars in lunar photos. Another significant point of contention regarding the Apollo moon landings is the conspicuous absence of stars in the lunar sky as captured in the photographs. This peculiarity has often been cited as evidence that the landings were not genuine and that humans never actually visited the moon. In the lunar environment, the absence of an atmosphere means that the sky appears black even during the lunar day, contrary to the blue sky we see on Earth, due to the scattering of sunlight. This absence of atmospheric scattering on the moon should, theoretically, make the stars significantly more visible in the lunar sky. The brightness of stars is typically measured in magnitudes, a logarithmic scale where lower numbers indicate brighter stars. On Earth, under ideal dark sky conditions, stars as faint as magnitude 6 can be seen with the naked eye. On the Moon, without atmospheric interference, this limit would be even lower, brighter, meaning more stars would be visible. The technology available during the Apollo missions was advanced enough to capture stars. The argument is that the camera settings required to capture the astronauts and the lunar surface in daylight should not have hindered the visibility of stars, given the absence of atmospheric interference and light pollution on the Moon. The lack of visible stars in the lunar photographs eliminates the possibility of verifying the location of the lunar module and the astronauts via star patterns, a method that could have provided incontrovertible proof of the lunar landing's authenticity. Flag waving in a vacuum. 
The moon lacks a substantial atmosphere. It's essentially a vacuum. This means there is no air to carry sound, no wind to cause motion, and no atmospheric pressure. In such conditions, a flag should not display any movement as it would on Earth. The observed waving of the flag in the lunar photographs seems to contradict these basic lunar environmental conditions. The energy imparted to the flag during its installation should have been quickly dissipated, leaving the flag motionless. In a hypothetical scenario where the flag's motion was due to wind, the direction and speed of the wind would be critical to analyze. On Earth, wind speeds of 10, 20 km per hour are typically needed to cause a flag to flutter as observed in the footage. However, such conditions are impossible on the Moon. The absence of an atmosphere on the Moon negates the possibility of wind, thus challenging the natural occurrence of the flag's movement. The Sun, as the sole light source on the Moon, should cast shadows at consistent angles for all objects. However, some photos show the flag's shadow at angles that deviate from this expectation. For instance, if the sun is positioned at an elevation angle of about 26 degrees, as was the case during some of the Apollo missions, the resulting shadows should align at complementary angles. Contrarily, certain images depict the flag's shadow at diverging angles, as much as 15 to 20 degrees away from other shadows in the same frame. The orientation of the flag in relation to the sun should dictate a specific shadow length and direction. Assuming the flag is approximately 1 meter wide and the sun is at a low angle, say 18 degrees above the horizon, the shadow should be longer and at a specific angle that corresponds to this sun elevation. Discrepancies in shadow length compared to this theoretical calculation raise questions about the lighting conditions when the photographs were taken. As we land back on Earth, remember, history is often written by those who tell the best stories. Did we really visit the moon? Or have we been orbiting around a beautifully crafted tale? Like and subscribe for more. Subs